This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. The date was March 31st, 2018, and it was a unification bout between undefeated heavyweight champions. Joseph Parker was the WBO heavyweight champion, and Anthony Joshua was the unified IBF WBA heavyweight champion. There were high expectations going in, but the fight was not especially memorable. The bout had a bit of an awkward rhythm, and aside from not having a lot of fireworks, it wasn't exactly a textbook display of technical prowess either. A lot of people were extremely critical of referee Giuseppe Corderone, where his perceived hands-on over-involvement disrupted the natural flow of the action. At the end of 12 rounds, Anthony Joshua was awarded a lopsided unanimous decision, with two judges scoring at 118 to 110, and the other having it 119 to 109. With the victory, AJ added the WBO belt to his existing collection, and at that time, there was great demand for AJ to have another unification bout for all the belts against another undefeated heavyweight champion, Deontay Wilder who had just stopped Luis Ortiz four weeks earlier. And this was still a couple of months before Tyson Fury, the rightful lineal world heavyweight champion, had made his return after an absence of more than two and a half years. For Joseph Parker, the loss was undoubtedly a setback, but Parker had only recently turned 26, and he was a skilled boxer with good ring smarts and athleticism, so there was plenty of time for him to rebuild. But as it turned out, Parker had mixed success after losing his championship. He lost a 12-round unanimous decision in his very next fight against Dillian White. Now, there were people who thought Parker deserved to win, and he was definitely coming on strong when he dropped White in the final round, but that was now back-to-back -back losses for Parker. He got back on track with a nice winning streak after that, which included a 12-round unanimous decision against Junior Fa. Then he won a pair of fights against Derek Chisora. The first was a split decision that some thought Chisora deserved to win. The second was a unanimous decision where most thought the scorecards were overly generous to Chisora. By the time Parker fought Joyce in September 2022, he still held a lot of promise, and he made a good account of himself against Joyce. But in the end, Joyce's durability, stamina, and constant pressure proved too much for Parker. Joyce ultimately broke him down both physically and mentally, and Joyce dramatically ended matters when he scored an 11th round knockout. At this point, it looked like Parker's days as a legit top 10 title contender may have been over. He appeared to have devolved into more of a fringe contender type, or even a gatekeeper on par with the way guys like Chisora and White are perceived today. Parker was obviously skilled, tough, athletic, and talented, but he seemed to lack that certain something special that separated the very good boxers from the great ones. The loss against the juggernaut looked like it might perhaps be the beginning of the end for Parker. But like a phoenix rising from the ashes, Parker has resurrected his boxing career, winning five fights in a row in the span of 14 months. An incredible activity rate in a day and age where top heavyweights typically only fight once or twice a year. But most impressive about his five-fight winning streak is the fact that his last two wins came against guys who were each more or less universally ranked in the top five when Parker beat them, Deontay Wilder and Big Bang Zhang, arguably the two hardest-hitting heavyweights competing today. Back in December, Parker made easy work of Deontay Wilder in a battle of former heavyweight champions. Parker was awarded a well-deserved lopsided unanimous decision in that one. Then just last weekend, Parker systematically outboxed another powerhouse heavyweight, overcoming some adversity along the way, where he suffered two knockdowns before being awarded a 12-round majority decision. I honestly thought the scores were closer than the action reflected, even with Zhang scoring two knockdowns. Parker's former conqueror Anthony Joshua is on a nice little winning streak of his own, having won four in a row. 
But what makes Parker's recent winning streak more impressive is the fact that he beat two legit top five guys back to back, winning both in style. Many observers, myself included, believed Parker would lose going into each of these fights. It was already well established that I ain't exactly Quasimodo over here, and that I don't know shit about boxing. But Parker has proven me wrong on multiple levels. The subtle style adjustment he has undergone since pairing up with trainer Andy Lee is simply incredible. And Andy Lee deserves a ton of credit here. Not surprising from a former champion who long resided with the late great Hall of Fame trainer Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel always told me that Andy was one of his best students. And with Sugar Hill getting a lot of praise for his transformation of Tyson Fury, another Emmanuel protege is now making his trainer mark here with Joseph Parker, and it's been extraordinary to watch. I for one have been thoroughly impressed with Parker's performances these past two fights. Parker's loudest detractors have been downplaying the victories, claiming that Wilder is no longer the same fighter since his trilogy bout with Fury, and then some are discrediting the win against Zhang because of Big Bang's age and sluggish inactivity. Maybe Wilder is a little more gun-shy and less determined now, and Zhang has long exhibited stamina issues that worked against his combination of skills and lethal power. But the real story here, as I see it, is Parker has made a subtle adjustment in his approach, where he is not providing his foes with a clear target. Parker completely neutralized the nuclear right hand of Wilder, and he mostly neutralized Zhang's power and overall output. And when Zhang did land, Parker was absorbing the incoming fire well. And the two times he was dropped, he recovered quickly and resumed fighting in a smart and disciplined fashion. I'm sure I'm not the only one who thought it would be tricky for Parker to survive nine more rounds after he got dropped in round three. But not only did he survive, he persevered and overcame while exhibiting tremendous championship heart in the process. I thought he basically won every round after the third, boring when he was dropped again in round E. The key for Parker in his wins against Wilder and Zhang was his economical movement where he never provides his foe with a stationary target where they feel comfortable unloading. In that sense, what Parker has done reminds me an awful lot of when Tyson Fury beat long reigning champion Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko didn't like throwing unless he was confident that he had a favorable delivery angle at the proper range. But Fury's herky-jerky, itchy-twitchy, elusive movement prevented Vlad from pulling the trigger. Parker very much did the same type of things against both Wilder and Zhang. His movement lacked that same type of herky-jerky, itchy-twitchy rhythm, but it was every bit as effective. And indeed, I believe it was more economical too. Rather than relying on his feet to steer him out of harm's way, Parker is now standing right in front of his opponent, just a touch outside their range. His head and upper body movement, combined with his subtly quick feet, it is all very economical and very effective. Bottom line for me, I don't think Wilder and Zhang lost against Parker because they are old or shot. I think they both lost against Parker because they couldn't cope with Parker's refined tactics under the guidance of Andy Lee. In my humble opinion, Parker deserves full credit and tremendous credit for these last two wins. I was thoroughly impressed and I cannot wait to see Parker back in action. I've picked against him these last two fights. But these two performances from Parker have been special. My eyes have been opened, and right now, there aren't many heavyweights I'd pick to beat him. Parker is undeniably one of the elite heavyweights competing today. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner. You know... Quasimodo predicted all this.